I was very impressed with ID Cooling's SE224 XT Tower Cooler in the 5 for Ryzen 5 roundup of tower coolers recently. This cooler represents a tremendous value for any build. With a fan upgrade, performance was getting very close to the knock to a U12A. Recently, ID Cooling released a more powerful option with one additional heat pipe and an extra fan for a push pull setup called the SE225 XT. So today, Let's find out how it stacks up. Welcome to Machines and More. Today we're going to look at a new 120 millimeter tower cooler from ID Cooling. First off, just a big thanks to ID Cooling for sending over a unit for testing and review. As with all reviews, all testing methodology and editorial direction is completely independent. This new SE225 XT in black comes with a fifth direct contact heat pipe and has another fan for push-pull. The idea is when you have two fans working together, moving air in the same direction, you can either leave them at the same RPM and gain some additional performance as well as some extra noise, uh, or you can reduce the speed of the fans while maintaining the same performance and lower the overall noise. Now, this is particularly helpful for denser heat fin arrays where the synergistic effect of having two fans would be very pronounced. The heat sink in this cooler is a little bit wider and also heavier at 640 grams. Height wise, it's supposed to be the same at 154 millimeters as the SE224 XT, but perhaps due to manufacturing tolerances, I found the SE224 XT to be ever so slightly taller at about 156. Now, one of my theories with the SE224 XT being so good um, is that in addition to high quality base plate machining, the position of the direct contact heat pipes was very opportune. There are some changes in this new base plate, which I'll discuss more in detail later. Obviously there's an additional heat pipe, but this base plate still has very high quality machining. The mounting system is identical to the other ID tower cooler. You get mounting bars and hardware for AM4 or for Intel LGA 11.5X, 1200, 20XX. Installation is the same, a very simple. The manual is very easy to understand and I totally recommend this for a new builder since it's extremely straightforward. I tested this cooler with AM4 and found the installation to be very uneventful, which is always a good thing when it comes to installing coolers. The included fans are the same model as the SE224 XT, but in addition to getting two, along with a fan splitter cable, they are ever so slightly different. The rubber bumpers are much larger on these. Now I'm not sure why that was a design change since the original fan didn't vibrate too much, but it did have some bearing noise uh, that I was hearing at higher RPMs, which that rubber padding wouldn't necessarily help with. As far as the fans go, they're very basic and the axle has a lot of upwards and downwards play in it. So it's not that surprising that there is some bearing noise. And even though this is a value oriented product, I really like the fact that ID Cooling includes a tube of thermal paste since this is a very convenient uh, thing to have around for future remounts or CPU changes. At least you have enough pa paste for you know three, four uh, remounts. Without further ado, let's get into thermal testing. For thermal benchmarking, the main comparison was between this SE224 XT and the new cooler. I tested these in the vented Cooler Master NR200 Ryzen 3700X test system, which was set up as a rear intake. Now, technically it wouldn't really matter too much since the graphics card was idling with no fans on, but I set this up based on how I would normally orient the fans with this Ampere Founders Edition card, which would be a rear intake for the tower cooler. Since we are testing with the similar fan configurations, despite being the same model of fan, I adjusted the RPM on the dual fan configuration so it would produce noise equal to that from the single fan configuration. Now with a closed case at 20 centimeters away, I targeted a noise level of two and a half decibels above the noise floor. Uh, the single ID cooling fan could uh, be spun at 1000 RPM, whereas the dual fan configuration had to go to 880. As a reference grade cooler, I tested Noctua's 7 heat pipe U12A, which was equipped with two of Noctua's NFA 12x25s, which could run at 1200 RPM at the same noise levels. As is typical for lots of CPU testing on this channel, I'm running the Ryzen 7 3700X locked to the all core boost clock of 4.3 gigahertz. So if you look at the graph, Right off the bat, we're seeing something really interesting. Where we might expect the bigger cooler with a push-pull setup to be besting the smaller one, it's not. 
In fact, the SE224 XT, the four heat pipe edition, is consistently better than the new cooler. The gap is about a degree, with the four heat pipe version hitting equilibrium at about 73.4 degrees, and the five heat pipe version hitting 74.4. Of course, the reference U12A is totally uh, beyond both of these, hitting 68.2. It's not what one would expect when moving up to a bigger heatsink, so to eliminate the variable of the fans, I tested the 224 XT with the same exact fans at the same exact RPM as the new 225 XT. And guess what? The 224 XT further improves to about 71.8 degrees, expanding the gap over the SE225 XT. That would indicate to me that the heatsink design of the SE224 XT is better suited, at least for the Ryzen 7, than the SE225 XT. Now, as a final data point, throwing the Noctua NFA 12 fans on the SE225 XT does get it below the SE224 XT by less than a degree. But really, you shouldn't have to put $60 worth of fans in order to catch a lower tier SKU in your product stack. So. It's definitely not what I was expecting, and after seeing how good the SE224 XT was, I really was hoping this would be even better and could even be a budget U12A. Now looking at the base plate, the critical differences are the positional shift in the direct contact copper heat pipes in order to accommodate that fifth heat pipe, as well as very thin gaps between the heat pipe and the base plate, which was not present in the four heat pipe version. So it's possible that the placement just isn't as good or the gaps are introducing some level of deficiency. Or as you can see, the amount of machined away exposed surface area is slightly larger with the four heat pipe version. The heat vent design on the heat sinks is similar and the only change being the slightly wider build in the SE225 XT, which really shouldn't be that big of an impact. We're talking almost a three degree swing with the exact same fans at the exact same RPM. So heat pipe and vapor consistency changes another possible factor. On a less technical level, a simple inference for those cooler shopping for an AMD CPU is if you're going to get a cooler at a budget price, the SE224 XT is the one to go for. It's 30 to $35, depending on which color you pick. And the new SE225 XT seems to be going for about $45 at the time that this video is being released. So even though you could make the argument that you're getting a second fan for the difference in price for a little more than 10 bucks, you could get a much better fan such as Be Quiet's Pure Wings 2 or a Scythe Kaze Flex. And it seems a little silly to double down on what is a largely unimpressive fan with bearing noise at higher RPMs. Now, speaking of which, I ran just a few noise recordings for your reference. So my recommendation is fairly simple. If you're running Ryzen 5 or 7, get the SE224 XT. It's a fantastic cooler for the money. It allows you to add a better fan or two later on if, you're, if you want. Um, if you're running Ryzen 7, try it out. If you can't keep the stock fan below 1200 RPM for your desired operating temps, then go ahead and upgrade the fan. You'll still be better off than most coolers out of the box in the $50 price bracket. Now, if you're building with a potential cooler clearance constraint, such as in the NR200 with the tempered glass panel, then the 224XT has the trick up its sleeve, which allows you to take this cosmetic cover off and just shave another three millimeters of height off of the total height. And that'll allow it to fit with the tempered glass panel, which is whereas this 224, uh, 225XT won't fit. Um, what you see is kind of what you get with this in terms of height. If you do go with this, 225 XT. It's not a bad cooler necessarily, but I would try to keep those fans below 1000 RPM since after that point that noise really ramps up because now you've got two of these fans in there. So I hope the review was helpful to you today. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, I've left some links down below. And if you would consider subscribing if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it. Well, thanks for checking in here and I'll see you next time.